guys, so in the Quadratics and Cubics playlist we have now reached a point where we are about to start playing with Cubics. So Cubic Expressions and Equations. So I thought a while before we jump into the tricky maths, let's have a little introduction as to what Cubics are. So, Cubics are one step higher than a Quadratic. Whereas with quadratics, the highest power of x is a 2. So with cubics, our highest power of x now is a 3. So they are things of the form ax cubed plus bx squared plus cx plus d. And that is an expression. As soon as we put in equals something, it doesn't have to be 0, although we always want to rearrange to get n equals 0. As soon as we put an equal sign in, we are dealing with a cubic equation. So, cubic equations then can have a maximum of four different terms. They don't have to have an x squared or an x or a constant term at the end. The only thing that they do have to have is an x cubed term. So, we can have any combination of b, c and d being zeros, but a is not allowed to equal zero. Okay, so whereas with quadratics they can potentially have zero real roots. So, a quadratic can never touch the uh, x-axis. Some of them will have one real root, so they'll touch the x-axis once. Some will have two. So they touch the x-axis uh, twice. Now cubics have to touch the x-axis at least once. They can't not. So if you sketch a cubic and it doesn't touch the x-axis, something has gone wrong. So every cubic has at least one real root. They can have two real roots. Uh, so they can touch the x-axis twice, or they can have three real roots. So, a bit different there from quadratics. So a little bit of a recap. Let's make sure we really know what factors are. So, with a quadratic, say we got this example here, x squared plus 7x plus 12. This is called a quadratic expression. Now we can factorise this to x plus 3 times x plus 4. Each of these brackets is a linear factor. They are linear because the power of x in there is just a 1. So anything where we just have an x term is called linear. So when we've got a quadratic that can be written as two linear uh, expressions being multiplied together, each of these is called a linear factor. So a linear times a linear factor will give us a quadratic expression. A linear times a linear times a linear would give us a cubic and a linear times a quadratic factor is going to give us a cubic too. So sometimes we're going to be finding cubic expressions or equations where we can only factor out one linear factor and then we've got a quadratic factor that has no linear factors. So that's a really really important concept uh, to get into your noggin before we start playing around with factorising and solving these guys. So cubics can be linear times linear times linear or they can just be linear times uh, quadratic. So that's really important. So just to finish off here, I'm going to give you an example of what the graphs look like. In this chapter, it doesn't look like we're actually going to be factorising uh, sketching uh, cubic graphs, which is good, less work. That's going to come in later in coordinate geometry, curves, graphs, and circles. But just to give you a flavour, these are the sort of things that cubic graphs can look like. Now, an important thing to realise is that 
they always have a general trend. So with this guy on the left here, notice how he's starting in the bottom left quadrant and then he's going off in the top right quadrant. So cubics always do this too. The guy on the right is starting in the top left quadrant and he's going off down in the bottom right quadrant. So these guys only hit the x-axis at one point, so they only have one real root. Then we got the guys that have two real roots, so they are hitting the x-axis at two different points. Now notice, we've sort of got a little quadratic -y bit where the graph just sits on the x-axis. We'll see why this happens later on. But here we got our two real roots then. So again we're starting on the bottom left and then going off into the top right with the left hand graph or with the right hand graph. We're starting on the top left and then we're going down, we're exiting in the bottom right. And then we've got our graphs with three real roots. So these guys hit the x-axis three different points. Again, uh, they're starting and going off in opposite diagonal quadrants. So the guy on the left is starting in the bottom left quadrant, goes a little bit mental, goes up above the x-axis, goes back down below the x-axis, but then goes back up above the x-axis, hitting it in three uh, distinct points. So that's what cubics with three real roots can look like. So, we are starting our adventures with cubics by factorising and solving cubics that don't have a constant term at the end. So there's no d term, d is equal to zero. So what's going to happen with these is that x is a factor of the... Um, expressions or equations. So x is always a factor. Okay, so that's what we're going to be doing in the next video. See you there.